Hey everyone, this is uh, Kaching here and uh, Charles Hoey here as well. Uh, we're going to uh, go over a quick overview of how to create this this box cutter that 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 Charles made uh, in the in this new version of Fusion 360. Uh, and so yeah, Charles is gonna gonna start walking us through it. Uh, take it away, Charles. Great, thanks, Kaching. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Charles Hoy. I'm a user experience designer for Fusion 360. And we can talk today about how this model was created and we'll use the timeline to step through the design history of this, of this uh, assembly yeah. so that we can see how it was created. Um, so just unravel some of the mystery of receiving a part that uh, um, you know, someone else has made and, and be able to understand how to step through it and recreate it if you'd like to. All right, so I'm gonna start by just grabbing the timeline marker and I can drag it back to roll, roll back to previous states of the model or I can just hit the leftmost marker, move to beginning, and I can just run it all the way back to the beginning and we'll start right there. Cool. And I'll just start stepping one at a time through the model. So the first feature that's here is a canvas. And I have the canvas turned off right now, but what I did, what I did is started uh. out with a, a canvas here just to be able to have some shape reference to model this thing from. Didn't hold exactly to this, but it was a good guide. Uh, the next feature I added were, was a sketch and a work plane. I'm just going to do both of those. I had these turned off at the, in the final state of the model, but I've just got a layout sketch here, so I'm, I'm basically using the uh, image as my overall shape guide. I put in a few sketches into this original, or a few uh, features, um, some circles and things into this original sketch. It was a nice way to just hold my um, a number of different pieces that I would use throughout the design so this sketch wasn't just used for one feature it was used for multiple features throughout yeah. the design yeah but instead of making multiple sketches I just went back and kept adding them to this original sketch early on in the design cool so uh, so you essentially sketched on that canvas right on the canvas on where the I sketched on the origin plane. Oh, origin so plane. the canvas okay. is placed on this origin plane uh, so is the sketch oh, okay okay and then you offset um, that other sketch that's that slightly slanted. So the work plane I created. Oh, the work plane. Yep. yep. So the work pl plane I created through a sketch element. So that's a good question. Um, my original sketch. Uh, I wanted to have this. I knew this. I know this is going to be a nice planar face at the front of my knife that the mm. blade's going to protrude from. Mm. I wanted a reference plane that I could um, that I could reference when I created this T spline body, and also that I could reference for the blade and the opening and everything else. So I just created a line there in my sketch and I created a work plane um, at angle, I think is what I used, work ah, plane at angle okay. through that line and at, and at an angle of either, it was either zero or 90 with respect okay. to the origin plane and gave me a nice reference there too. Cool, can you show that real quick on the, just in the tool drop down? It was sure. Plane, plane at angle, plane at there angle. you go, okay, got yeah. it. Cool. Uh, the next step was my T-spline body. Mm. I spent a fair amount of time in here um, right now you're seeing the result of the T-spline body because this is computed. This is the this is the uh, resultant solid body. That's right. But of course anything here I can right click and edit. So if I edit there, I can go into my T-spline mode, um, the sculpting mode. I have all of these uh, sculpting tools up here, and I, I roughed out this shape and 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 then refined it as I saw fit. And then what I did is I went in here and grabbed all these vertices and did a fit to plane. So oh. we have this. Uh, flatten and if I if you do a flatten you can pick multiple vertices these are already already flattened but you can if you just pick a bunch of vertices it'll flatten them mm -hmm. alternatively you can say select a plane and ah. I selected that plane and it pulled all of them nice and tight to that plane so That's I, knew cool. I, I came out of the, the uh, T-spline environment with a nice planar face there to use all right so I'm just gonna say uh, I'm just gonna undo to get myself out of here because this is already done mm -hmm. now I'm back to my resultant solid body there all right, step one forward, and we have a couple body splits here. So here what I'm doing is using... Using your sketch. Those sketches to start splitting away the body. And if you look over here in the browser, you can start seeing those bodies show up. So there are my two grips, and there's that main body. Right. Now what I did, this is a little bit tricky. This is a, um, a bit of a modeling technique that I've used before. I copied those two bodies. So those two bodies right there have been duplicated. And the reason I did that is because then what I did is offset two of those. So if you look at these two bodies, they're offset just a little bit. Yeah. So let me turn those two off. So basically what I did is I've got the main body, mm -hmm. and I have that body that's been offset, and that body that's, that's been offset. offset. And my next feature was a join. 
So now I have one body oh. with, those off, the, with those recessed faces, and I have grips that fit that nice and tightly. So all that's driven by the T-spline body. If the if the if the T-spline body changes, then all these splits and sculpts, or all, all, all these splits and um, and offsets and boolean should update. That's cool. From there, I have a few. I've got a fillet feature that's uh, just going on the inside of that body. Let me actually turn this off so we can kind of see that come about. The fillet feature that's going in there, and then what I did is I shelled the main body here. Ah, uh, okay. I also have an analysis going on here. This is a really nice tool. Um, I don't know if anyone hasn't used it yet. I created a section analysis, uh, which is right here under inspect. Just created a section analysis, and I picked one of my origin planes, and that thing is always there. It's not part of my history, it's just there, so I can always go in there and turn that thing on or off. So you can see that you know, before my shell, I had a solid body, mm -hmm. after my shell, um, I have a I have a shelled body, and you're also seeing the grips here, which have not yet been shelled. But we're going to do that in just a second. Let me turn that analysis off. Step forward, and the next split was to split into split the main body into two halves, right there and there. And then I also shelled. The next thing I shelled was the grips. So I'll turn the analysis back on. Now you can see the grips are being shelled. If oh, I go interesting. Back, and forward, those grips have been shelled with the same same uh, offset, or actually just a little bit more to add a little bit of clearance so I can see what's going on there. That's great. So um, one thing I wanted to ask, how did you do that first shell? Did you just use the shell command and then selected the, the uh, your, your essentially the, the handle body and then it just shells it right away? Good question. So if you hit shell and you pick a face, it wants to try to remove that face, which is a common shell ah. operation. If you don't want to remove any faces, as I didn't in this case, um, I just picked the body from the browser. And it'll oh, show okay. the, the entire body without removing any faces. Ah, okay, that's good to know. Sometimes it's hard to see that it's actually happened, but... And that's why that's you do the section, section view, yeah, the exactly. section, okay. All right, so from there, if we take a look, all these are still bodies. So this is still a multi-body model. This isn't a multi-component model, so this isn't yet an assembly. Mm -hmm. Everything's kind of a um, just a, a body that happens to be close to each other right now. These next two features here, I, I right-clicked on these bodies and I said, create, or I said, where, where, where the, oh, I can't do it from, I can't do it in a roll back state, but typically at the end state, you can right-click and you can say, create components from bodies. And mm -hmm. that's what these next two steps are. So this first one promoted the two, oh, okay. left and right, turn that's analysis true. off. The first one promoted left and right, two components. And the second one of these promoted the grips. To Very cool. their own components. So now we have an assembly. We have left, right, grip, and grip as our as our parts in that assembly. All right. So now I have an assembly with some kind of some fledgling components in here, and from there I just start adding some features to rough some things out. So I've got a revolve feature here that, ah. that starts to put some of these in there. If I can just um, you know, and, and if you're curious about how some of these features are made, it's really easy just to right click and say edit, and you can select that thing and see exactly what's going That's, on. I picked yeah. those profiles and I picked an axis out of that sketch that, that just worked. I mean, you can draw a line in there any place. Mm -hmm. And I've got the cutaway for, for that grip. Uh, I did something very similar up front here. I can double click or right click and say edit. And I have a rotation rotational cut with a with a axis from that sketch that uh, oh, wow. just creates little grips so, in there. Oh, okay, so this was, this was derived essentially from your sketches, yeah. Because you sketched those circles before. That's right. And there they are right ah, there. Ah, nice. And I also put that line in the sketch just to be able to have something to revolve about. Okay, and what's nice okay. is when you're done creating that revolve, you can go into that sketch and just start dragging things around a little bit and see how things change. So mm -hmm. it's so next next step is a chamfer. And you can see the mm -hmm. chamfer has been added. Yep. Uh, all at all those edges in there just to give it a better look. Now this gets a little interesting too. These next two features are. Uh, something you get uh, when you create a new component. So in this case, what I did, so I have a sketch here, and this original sketch had a blade in there. Mm -hmm. So I extruded that blade, and I did it both directions so it was centered in there. And so I get the extrude for the blade, but what I also get is because I chose new component when I when I created that extrude, so right here I'm going to double click. Um, when I, when I created this extrude originally, I had an option that said new component. It's gone now because I've already chosen it, but it created a new component and put that extrusion inside of it, and the result was I got a new blade component here. So 
when I created that extrude, I just automatically marked it as a new component because I knew it was a new a new part in this assembly. Gotcha. Um, so the blade's there, and then what I did is sketched on this face, and this is kind of tricky. Wow, I put just a little triangular to cut that away. Yep. And what I wound up doing was sweeping that along the blade edge because had I just extruded that sketch, what would happen is that oh. triangle that I extrude would go normal, it would go down yes. this way. And so instead I just did a sweep, which is just like an extrude, only you're giving it a path instead of letting it choose its path. And I picked the bottom of that blade and it just swept back. Very cool. Across there and created that cutaway for the, for the blade.